Tampa Bay is a powerful and important economic engine, as well as a major population center along the Gulf Coast of Florida. Home to over 3 million people, the regions include the cities of Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater. It is a world-class tourist destination and is often ranked among the top places to live in terms of quality of life. Local ports have an economic impact of over $15 billion. Major universities and a local military base are also economic drivers of the region. As in other parts of Florida, the environment is linked to the economy. Tampa Bay is Florida's largest open water estuary and home to diverse marine life. The natural beauty further enhances the tourism of the region. Like much of Florida, the region is prone to destruction from surges and flooding due to its low-lying coastline. These threats are projected to grow substantially over the next 30 years. Not only is storm surge from hurricanes a threat, but also everyday rainfall, known as tidal flooding. It is predicted to increase in this area over time. Temporary closures from tidal and storm surge flooding of local tourism industries, such as cruise terminals and convention centers, could have cascading effects on the local economy. By 2045, daily tidal flooding may result in 2.9 billion in property value loss and projected sea level rise could result in 34 million in sales, tourism, and property tax losses annually. When you look at climate change on a global basis, it's, it's such a huge, overwhelming issue. But we also need to look locally to see what we can do here to help buffer our local communities. Much of the region's infrastructure was not built to withstand these increases and continues to be protected using hardened gray infrastructure practices, unable to adapt to the changing conditions. Storm surge threatens nearly 70,000 properties in Hillsborough, Manatee, and Pinellas counties, all three counties that make up Tampa Bay. In May of 2021, Florida passed Resilient Florida, a bill designed to develop a coordinated approach to Florida's coastal and inland resiliency. This new program enhances our efforts to protect our inland waterways, coastlines, and shores, which serve as an invaluable natural defense against sea level rise. Over $640 million to prepare communities for the impacts of climate change. Hurricane Ian, which was projected to hit Tampa Bay, has shown us that communities throughout Florida are unprepared for intensifying storms. It's not just about the track of a hurricane, but it's, you know, how fast is that hurricane going to move? Where is it going to impact the coast? And as a consequence, who's most vulnerable moving forward? It's important to know how much rainfall is going to be associated with that storm. And, and all of that information really comes from data that we've been uh, able to assimilate into these models. The more data that we have, the better our forecasts are going to be. The Florida Flood Hub serves as the go-to source for flood forecasting in the state. Based at the University of South Florida College of Marine Science, the Flood Hub engages academic research institutions policymakers, private partners, and practitioners to address Florida's flooding and its sea level rise challenges. The Flood Hub has a lot of component parts, obviously, but the working groups are really at the heart of, of what we do. You know, the first working group, for example, deals very specifically with sea level rise. Being able to provide refined um, sea level rise projections across the state um, will be of tremendous benefit to this state. If we can increase or improve the certainty around those projections, that allows us to, to plan much better right, and for much a wiser use of the limited resources that we have available. Having the flood hub in Tampa Bay's backyard will be extremely useful and will eventually be able to provide the region with the latest climate science and modeling to advance natural hybrid solutions toward resilience. 
So investments in that technology that allow us to collect data that not only feed into the models, but allow us to validate and verify the models moving forward so we can refine them, we're all going to be better off uh, for those investments. When you're dealing with coastal storms and an anticipated rise in sea level, it's so important to do the planning now for 10, 30, 50 years into the future. And by doing that, you're able to get ahead and construct the infrastructure that is needed, uh, as well as look at our coastal communities and see what type of green infrastructure you can put in place as well. If you want to protect your shoreline without putting a wall up, there are multiple lines of defense that you can put in. You can put an offshore breakwater in. And these can be simple things from oyster bags to oyster domes. And as you get closer to the shore, then you can plant behind them marsh grass, which will ultimately succeed into mangroves. By having those three in place, you really provide a lot of protection and resiliency. Tampa Bay is already reaping the benefits of Resilient Florida's funding with a number of nature-based projects. We are currently in the most upper portions of Tampa Bay, specifically Old Tampa Bay, sitting at Felipe Park in Pinellas County. So this project is working with Pinellas County at this park to provide a demonstration project, an area for folks that live around here can come and look at and say, we have alternatives than hardening the shoreline. We're doing a whole series of them for natural shorelines, like behind us, where we can do living shorelines. Also along the side here, where all the archeological artifacts are, there's a seawall, and that's good to protect those artifacts. So what can we do to soften that seawall? A living seawall, for example. So we're putting in five treatments of what can be done in front of a seawall that provides some ecological benefits, improve water quality, and aesthetics for the property. In Tampa Bay and across the state, Environmental Defense Fund is committed to working with communities and leaders to prioritize and invest in nature-based solutions. We want to see more funding opportunities allocated towards natural infrastructure and the long-term sustainable resilience these types of projects can provide. I do think we are making progress to become prepared in order to address those changes. But I would continue to hope that the Tampa Bay area will provide that kind of leadership to help address climate change issues. And people will once again look at our community to see what they can do in their own backyards as well. We could have this quality of life in spite of these catastrophic storms that happen. We could still have that and protect people in our infrastructure but we can do it while still providing ecosystem services. To the extent that we can learn to adapt to uh, some of the changes that we can expect, we can mitigate some of those changes, we can still have a vibrant uh, social and economic environment. And by essentially leading by example, the Tampa Bay region can be a really special place in that regard. Investing in these solutions means we not only get a greater return on investment, but we create other benefits like recreation, habitat, tourism, and increased water quality, just to name a few. We must prioritize solutions that can adapt to sea level rise, increase flooding, and storm surge now so that we can protect the people, place, and purpose that makes Florida, Florida.